John Coleman with weather, and Mark G. and Greco with sports. The Channel 5 News at 6. Good evening. Carol Marine is on vacation. I'm Mary Murnane. And I'm Art Norman. An apparent argument over money has left two people dead tonight and another wounded. The gunman, described as a disgruntled employee of the water filtration plant, reportedly shot two co-workers before taking his own life. Channel 5's Peter Carl is live at the scene of that shooting with more details. Peter? That argument started over money last week and apparently brewed over the weekend. And after lunch today, it exploded in murder and suicide. Everybody involved apparently knew each other. They were in a carpool together. The altercation started in a dispute over a stolen paycheck, $500. 24-year-old Jackie Henney accused fellow worker Maurice Rogers of stealing her paycheck last Friday. Rogers left at lunch, got a gun, a nine-shot 22 caliber pistol, and then came back and shot Henney in her left elbow. Another employee, Glenn Ford, turned, tried to help, and then in the struggle, Ford was shot four times, once in the neck, and the gunman Rogers then put the gun to his head and shot himself. Area 6 Detective Commander Edward Nicky talked with reporters just a short time ago. He was armed with a nine-shot 22 caliber revolver. All indications are that he, uh, he fired all nine shots right within the premises. He confronted Jackie Henney, and uh, again, there's a series of shots fired, there's, so there's some inconsistency exactly as to who he fired at at what time. Well, what happened, when that shooting took place, it was in the microbiology lab. There were about nine other people present, but apparently they went off into a corner when the altercation started. There was one witness that police are talking to, and of course, they're talking to Jackie Henney. And this, of course, occurred here at the city's water uh, purification plant, and Top Brass was here trying to clear this one up in a hurry. Art and Mary. Uh, Peter, I was at the hospital earlier today, and the uh, police were talking to the female victim. Did she uh, and give them the details at, uh, to solve this thing, or what? Apparently, that's what happened. They're uh, counting a lot on what she had to say to them uh, when they were at the hospital. They were detectives, as you said, were talking with her, and she was filling in the details of what caused this whole thing, uh, why he went out, why he became as enraged as he did. No one will really know the answer to that question, uh, but that's the theory that they're going on, and they're saying this is now a simple a murder that turned into a suicide, and they left one person with a shattered elbow. Is she, okay. I understand she's in good condition. That's what I understand, that she was in good condition and the gunshot shattered her left elbow. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. In DuPage County tonight, an investigation into a fatal plane crash. There are four people are reported killed in that crash of a small plane just south of the DuPage County Airport. Channel 5's Rich Samuels is at the scene and has more in this live report. Rich? Arthi, about the only thing that's recognizable in this aircraft at this point, as you possibly can see, is the tail section. It's a Belanca single-engine aircraft. It's made out of wood and fabric covered. It came to rest in a field about a quarter of a mile from the runway where it was headed. This was at about uh, 2.40 this afternoon. The aircraft was making an approach. The tower apparently told the aircraft to climb. For whatever reason, the aircraft then went into a stall and crashed here. Four people inside, all four were burned in the fire that followed. Uh, the airport, the aircraft had begun about 36 minutes earlier in a flight from Bloomington, Illinois, uh, carried itself over Pontiac and then Joliet, arriving here at about uh, just a little bit before 4 o'clock. At this point, there is no idea as to what the cause of, the, of this accident was, although an NTSB inspector by here said that near the aircraft on the ground are large chunks of ice, which apparently had formed on the leading edge of the control surfaces. This may in some way have contributed to the crash, but since the investigation has not really been uh, begun at this point, since there still is at least one body inside the wreckage, we don't really know what caused it. Furthermore, because next of kin have, been, have not been notified, the identity of the four passengers inside has not been made known. Art and Mary? Thank you very much, Rich. Nine people, six from families in Cicero and Melrose Park, are dead tonight, victims of a southeast Texas automobile accident. The wreck took place near the town of Hill J, Texas. A station wagon carrying 10 individuals left the road, crashing into a parked semi-tractor trailer truck. Among the dead are the driver, 22-year-old Avil Gill of Cicero, his pregnant wife, and their three-year-old daughter, Christana. The families were making an all-night drive north, returning for the funeral of a relative in Mexico. I think they left Thursday or Friday, and they buried them Saturday. And I must, uh, probably they wanted to get back because of Christmas. They wanted to spend Christmas over here with the family. The wreck was called the worst this year in all of Texas. Cook County Sheriff's investigators tonight say they may be closing in on a suspect in that brutal murder of a Palatine man over the weekend. 49-year-old Robert Bernauer was found beaten and stabbed to death in his apartment. 
Bernauer was an accountant and suffered from multiple sclerosis. People say he was beaten with the canes that he needed in order to walk. Robbery was the apparent motive. This, of course, is the season for giving, but in Hammond, Indiana, one man is taking for a worthy cause. For the third year in a row, Judge Peter Enemy Kadick is fining those who appear before him in food. It's all part of an effort that raised 4,000 cans of food for the needy. A police officer who doubles as an administrative assistant for me came up with the idea two years ago, and we tried it out right away. And the first year we collected uh, plenty of canned food, and we've been doing it every year since. When he came in and told us to turn in 10 cans of food instead of paying a fine, it was all right. Judge Kittick's food drive is not in lieu of fines, but in addition to a condition of court supervision. There's much more news still to come tonight. We will have an update on Megan LaRocco. That is the Chicago baby struggling to survive three liver transplants. And later, it was a long, cold wait. Hundreds of Bear fans waiting to buy playoff tickets. We'll hear from some of those lucky ones later on. Norman's Mark for your holidays. Four stars. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's from all of us at Channel 5. Well, rats bit. Let's have a show of hands. How many people think the squad bay is ready to go yeah. as yeah. is? There you have it. Democracy in action. We'll run instead. Clint Eastwood, Heartbreak Ridge, rated R. Now playing. Next, a grandfather sued. I told him, I said, Pat, there is a new law. Grandparents' rights. And I said, if we have to, I said, I will file suit. And he come at me, grabbed me by the throat, and hit me twice. Once on the side of the glasses here, broke my glasses, broke my nose, and I have the doctor's report of the results. Right, we'll, we'll get on the next People's Court. When you're out to buy the perfect stereo, why not buy one not so perfect? To save lots of money. Look at the backroom bargains for sale at Remco. Chips, nicks, scratches that can save you up to 70% off the cost of a new stereo. And while they may not look perfect, they sound fantastic. You'll find VCRs for sale, too. All rental returns, all with our 90-day limited warranty. Rimco's Backroom Bargains, for sale now at a perfect price. There's a new pet, Chia Pet, the pottery that grows. Just soak the chia seeds, spread them on your Chia Pet, and keep them filled with water. In a few days, he sprouts his own beautiful green herbal coat, and soon you've got a lovely house plant. Everyone loves Chia Pet. They're fun to watch and easy to grow. So get one for yourself and one for that perfect gift. Chia Pet, the pottery that grows. At Walgreens, Perry, Woolworth, Cabot, Rexall, Revco, and participating True Value in HWI. Seven-month-old Megan LaRocco continues her fight for life tonight as she tries to recover from her third liver transplant in three weeks. Channel 5's Rick Salinger says the surgery has not come without a price. Megan is doing better. Her bleeding is down, but still she underwent her sixth surgery in her seven months of life today. Nothing major this time to clear out clotted blood. Her parents were feeling better, too. Mom even sporting a Megan button as she talked about her daughter's rattle. Instead of a tube, she had the, the rattle, and she literally was just... And I felt real good, and that's it, Meg, you got to keep fighting. And the parents are fighting, too, to try and pay a million dollars in medical bills. At the District National Bank, the Megan LaRocco Fund is growing, with all sorts of mail coming in. Christmas cards, letters, you know, God bless you, and prayers are with you and all that. And um, a lot of people have been responding. The fund's address is 1110 West 35th Street in Chicago. Smaller contributions have been picking up, too. In the cans that first brought Megan to the public's attention when 22 of them were stolen. Yeah, people have been putting dollars in more now than before. Before, they were just putting change in, like the change from the check. Now they're putting dollars in, too. The little girl is a fighter. It's not easy for anyone to go through three transplants. Megan isn't out of the woods yet. Doctors say the next three days are critical and could make the difference as to whether she lives or dies. Rick Salinger, Channel 5 News. And doctors tonight say that Megan is in critical but stable condition. Mayor Washington tonight is enjoying a boost from a new Chicago Tribune poll. 54% of those polls said 
They vote for Washington in the Democratic primary, 38% for Jane Byrne, and 8% did not know. All those big picture things, which you all know we've well talked about, those are the things that people see. They create jobs. We don't uh, uh, believe the figures. They uh, fly right in the face of uh, several other polls that have uh, been taken right about the same time. A recent Byrne campaign poll shows Mayor Washington with 47% of the vote, Byrne with 46% and 7% undecided. Byrne spokesman Joe Pecor said a better picture of where voters will stand will emerge next month when it becomes clearer who the contestants will be in the Democratic primary. And the mayor today announced a sale of $58 million in bonds to get the North Loop redevelopment project moving again. Most of the money will be used to purchase key land parcels in the block just east of the Civic Center. At a City Hall press conference, the mayor called the bond sale the last piece in the puzzle. We expect our investment of approximately $58 million will attract over $200 million in private investment in stores, restaurants, and housing. And we now have a check for you. Yes, yes. yes. I wasn't going to let you get away with that. <laughs> The mayor said that the clearing of the land for a new retail office complex will take several years. And in other business news tonight, oil prices are soaring following an OPEC decision to cut production. The price of a barrel of oil is up $3 to $18 a barrel. Now, consumers will feel the higher prices soon. Analysts predict the cost of gasoline and home heating oil will rise 5 to $0.10 cents a gallon within the next two months. A media merger to report tonight between the Windy City and the Motor City. Chicago Magazine is being bought by the company that publishes the Metropolitan Detroit Magazine. The deal is worth $17 million. Chicago Magazine has a circulation of more than 200000 The new owner is not planning any drastic changes. And prices are uh, sagging a little bit tonight on Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped more than two points to close at 1926.46, and more than 157 million shares were traded. The mayor of Kennesaw, Georgia, is in Oak Park tonight to honor a man who shot a couple of thieves last October and then was prosecuted for violating an Oak Park handgun ban. Mayor J. O. Stevenson says Kennesaw has an ordinance requiring every head of household to own a handgun. He made service station owner Don Bennett an honorary Kennesaw citizen. The handgun ban didn't prove anything except send an innocent person, try to send them to jail. And the criminals are still running around free. They do what they want. How many, how many burglars have been shot by homeowners in Kennesaw? Not any. They're afraid to try. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Stevenson the says burglaries have dropped from 11 per 1,000 to only 1 1.6 per 1,000 since mandatory gun ownership became law. An Oak Park jury, if you'll recall, found Bennett innocent of violating the village's handgun law. And Don Coleman joins us right now, and uh, it seems pretty nice out to me for this time of year. We did have some beautiful weather today, Art and Mary, and dear friends, my forecast includes sunshine, rain, and snow. Stay with us for the Christmas week forecast. We'll be right back. Welcome to Dominic's and their sensational new photo center services. This week, Dominic's film processing special is your second set of prints free with coupon when your original roll of film is developed and printed at Dominic's photo center. You get professional Kodak color watch quality, Kodak paper, Kodak TechNet computerized quality control, plus overnight express service. This week only, save more with Dominic's 50 cent off coupon available in store good on any Kodak film. Shop the smart way at the photo center in your neighborhood Dominic's finer food store. Life has just become a little easier. Hey, folks, it's 7.02 a.m. and... Life has just become a little safer. Life has just become a little lazier. Life has just become the clapper. Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off, the clapper. The clapper. The clapper. Let you turn things on or off from anywhere in the room. Just plug in the clapper and a television, lamp, stereo, almost anything you want to clap on and off. Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off, the, the clapper. clapper. 
Give it a big hand. The Clapper sound-activated switch is now available at Venture, Walgreens, Osco, Perry, and Woolworth stores. Makes a great Christmas gift. Well, I remember last year at this time that it was a whole lot colder. And three years ago at this time, a huge cold front was coming through that gave us our coldest Christmas ever in 1983. But at this moment, it's a warm front, and Chicago's temperatures have actually gone up a little during the day. Sunshine has turned to cloudiness, and the temperature is now on an average at 33, humidity 89%. Southwest breeze at 15, producing a wind chill of 14. Temperatures range from as warm as 34 at Gary, no warmer than 30 in Joliet, 33 in the heart of the city, and 31 at Waukegan. I'm predicting a cloudy, foggy evening with the temperature drifting off into the high 20s. Uh, the wind's continuing out of the southwest and then clearing skies overnight. But foggy conditions near the surface, I don't think the fog will be super intense, but it will be present. And now, look at the huge storm to the south of us. This storm in the Gulf of Mexico is very moist. It has produced a six-inch rain near San Antonio in Texas, a four-inch snow in the hill country of West Texas, still a little snow falling in that region, and a snowflake as far to the north as Topeka, Kansas, on the north edge of the clouds. This huge rainstorm will flood the south tomorrow and move up into the Ohio Valley on Wednesday, Christmas Eve day. Southern Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee could get huge rains out of this. Chicago will get a rainy day, but then a cold front and maybe snow. As you can tell, however, there's no really cold air in the country. Even Fargo is above freezing at this hour. Limestone, Maine is the coolest spot at 21, Key West warmest. Well, here are my weather maps for tomorrow. And you see snow in the high country of West Texas, Western Kansas, nothing heavy spreading into rain, which becomes very heavy along the delta of the Mississippi. Now, big rain by evening tomorrow is moving up into Tennessee. Chicago will still be sunny, however, but we'll be watching all the stormy weather begin to pincer in on us, and later in the week, it could get very interesting. Tomorrow, I'm predicting we'll be in the 40s, 50s in Little Egypt, 30s in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and northern Iowa, from Omaha northward, and all of that will be converging over the Chicago area on Christmas Day. Low tomorrow, 26 degrees. Our Tuesday high, 42 degrees, so a warm, sunny, gorgeous day to finish last-minute Christmas shopping, go to parties, do good stuff. Low 26, high 42, could be icy spots in the morning, will be below freezing briefly. The wind will turn to the east tomorrow, and watch out, because that is the beginning of a change. Christmas Eve day, a rain, probably an all-day rain, temperature getting into the 40s. But then Christmas Eve night, the cold front begins to drop our temperatures, and now I feel that we will get... Snow, not rain, on Christmas Day, probably light, but more snow on Friday and Saturday. So this big storm's coming this week up out of the Gulf through the Ohio Valley. will be on the western edge of it, but probably in the rain part, just until it passes and a little ripple comes zipping by in the colder air from Alberta, intensifying perhaps into a goodly storm over the plains by later in the week. Things are beginning to look a little more like winter, and it could be that the new sleds will be used by the weekend. Just a jacket will do if you're going out this evening. It won't rain, won't snow. Tomorrow, or if you're staying home tonight, you could do a little snow dance if you're that kind of person. Because we have something brewing. <laughs> and we know you Mary are. Mary and Art. <laughs> Thank no you. No white Christmas. Possible. It's possible, Art. Don't give up. Anything okay. is possible. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, John. It was December 1985 all over again with the usual touch of pandemonium this morning at Soldier Field as Bear fans lined up for playoff tickets. Many of the diehards camped out overnight in sleeping bags. It was a party atmosphere with food and spirits to keep warm. When dawn came, more fans showed up. Ticket windows opened promptly at 8 o'clock this morning, and 58 minutes later, 2,500 tickets were gone. Well, the same as last year, there, were hap there was happiness and cries of foul play. Now, I was just about ready to get, my, get up there and get tickets. This is ridiculous. I, this is a farce. I don't believe this. They should do like they did last year. I'm sorry. Another 20 more. Another 2,400 tickets were sold at Ticketron this morning. And up next, Mark Greco is here to tell us are the Bears where they should be. They are, Art, but there is some concern about William Perry's waistline. That and more coming up in a minute. Stay with William us. William Perry. Right now, Time Magazine has good news for everyone who's ever wanted to make an important phone call but couldn't find the number. Because if you order Time now, you'll get a free gift with your paid subscription. Time's exclusive phone file. It's a combination telephone and flip file directory to keep your phone numbers where they belong. With a phone. So instead of having to reach for a number... Write it down. Oh, here it is. Um, you just reach for the phone and the number's right there. With Time's gift, you can have all your numbers in one place. 
And with Time Magazine each week, you can have the whole world in one place. Fascinating, exciting, entertaining, and informative. Time reaches to the heart of events and brings them home to you with a superb writing and photography that makes the experience of time unique. And now it can be yours for almost half off the cover price. And with a thank you gift, that means you'll never have to look high and low for a phone number. Instead, it'll always be at your fingertips. Time even makes it easier for you to call with push-button dialing. It has call muting for privacy, an automatic redial. There's a handy pen and pencil holder, an area code directory, even a built-in clock. It's a Time Magazine exclusive, and it's yours free when you subscribe for 30 weeks of time at nearly half off the cover price. Payable in three easy installments of just $9.79 each. And all you have to do is call our toll-free number. What's the number? 1-800-621-4300. Got it. And with your paid subscription, you'll get Time's unique phone file free. So call now. Uh, what was that number again? It was... That's 1-800-621-4300. It's the most practical telephone ever invented. And it's part of Time's best offer ever. So don't miss it. You'll never lose a phone number again. <laughs> Mark Jan Greco is here, and I got a big question right at the top. A lot of the New York sportscasters and uh, the pontificators of uh, how things are going to come out in, in the Super Bowl are not even counting on our Bears being there. Well, what do they know, Art? <laughs> See, that's the way we like it. Mike Ditka loves the situation. I know all weekend long, you know, you watch all the games on Saturday and Sunday, all the announcers are saying, geez, you know, the Niners are peaking at the yeah. right time, and those Giants can't be beaten. No one mentioned the Bears save John Madden. He's picking the Bears. So you know we're, we're, we're in good hands. I wouldn't worry about it. The way the Bears wound up the regular season against the Cowboys yesterday, you've got to believe the defense can actually carry this club to the Super Bowl and win the darn thing again, just as long as the rejuvenated offense can pitch in a little bit and avoid the big turnovers. Mark Goldberg wraps it up from Lake Forest. Of all the stories that came out of yesterday's win, and there were many, the headliner, of course, was Doug Flutie. He came, he started, and he conquered. And he settled the Bears quarterback questions once and for all. I've seen enough uh, just in the pure mechanics of passing the football. And uh, he knows enough about the offense now and uh, th that he's going to be the guy that's going to be on the field to start these things off and uh, hopefully to finish him up. Ditka says Flutie sees the field so well, says he's something special, and says he made up his mind on Doug Flutie after the game. Well, let's say I just knew a little bit more six weeks ago than you guys knew six weeks ago. You're still worried about how tall he is and whether he wears elevator shoes. I'm not worried about that. What does Mike Ditka worry about now? Try William Perry. He's another player Ditka is quite fond of, and he doesn't like the fridge's weight. But he goes to plateaus, and this plateau is one we haven't seen before. But this is not a laughing matter. Flunking his weigh-ins has cost the fridge some $38,000 this year. And Ditka is concerned about something else. I'm not worried about how he's playing right now. I want him to be alive when he's 29 years old. And I don't know that you can go the way he's going, and he will be. And I told him that honestly. I mean, I think that there's more important things. I think it's discipline, period. Discipline on this team could be spelled defense. An NFL record of least amount of points given up. Vince Tobin admitted this team was better than he expected. I think so. I think so. I, I think when you analyze of what's happened during the course of this year, we've done some things on defense that's really unbelievable. Yeah, I've never seen first stringers beg to go back in in a you know a situation that the defense was in yesterday because they have a, you know it's a team pride out there. They didn't want Dallas to score at the end. And 16 down and now three to go. This is the second season with a lot of reason. How about that? That sounds good. First game is here, January 3rd, starting time at 3 p.m. I think the atmosphere will be more exciting. Uh, people will probably have longer to drink and uh, get ready for the game. And that's what it, uh, you know, it'll amount to. The crowd will be into it. Maybe we'll see an Otis Wilson do the Gatorade thing on Mike Ditka a la Bill Parcell. If that's, what, uh, if that's what the rewards of victory are, then I'll let them dump anything they want to dump on me. <laughs> Mark Goldberg, Channel 5 Sports. All right, and congratulations today to Otis Wilson. Today, Otis was named NFC Defensive Player of the Week. But back to the offense, even though Flutie says he's still not sure of himself, he is the starting quarterback for the playoffs, and he got a real boost of confidence yesterday that should really carry him a long way. What's really more important than that, though, now he has gained all the confidence of all those big guys on his offensive line. He's got to be loving them. 
I think Doug's play has improved a lot. He's uh, once he gets back in that backfield, you better just keep your keep your butt going, running around, because you don't know where he's at. And he's gonna make some plays. Things were still a little bit erratic, uh, still a little shaky, but it, it was just the smoothing out process is happening. It's coming. <laughs> Little by little, and uh, you know, I was just thankful to get the chance. We've had so many different quarterbacks the last few years here that we're so programmed with those kind of questions that it, it we say it doesn't matter because we have our job we have to do. So we'll 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 play regardless who's back there, and we'll support who's ever back there. Indeed, tonight the Dolphins are going to try to knock the Patriots out of the playoffs. The Atlanta Falcons, in the meantime, today fired head coach Dan Henning. In baseball, the Sox made a deal. They sent Bill Dolly to the Cardinals for infielder Fred Marique. And in college basketball, the AP Top 20 is out. UNLV still number one, Purdue number two. The Boilers are playing Toledo tonight. Iowa's at three. The Hawkeyes have Ryder this evening. North Carolina's in action. They're still at four. Or they move up a notch to four. Auburn is five. And the second five is Oklahoma, Syracuse, Indiana is eight. The Illini dropped from 5 to 9 after losing to North Carolina over the weekend. Georgetown is 10. DePaul up two notches from 19 to 17. The Demons have Northwestern tonight at the Horizon, and Chicago State has Northeastern Illinois. We'll have highlights of both. Now, the Bulls will be hosting Cleveland at the stadium tomorrow night, but today at the Multiplex, they, along with Santa and Benny the Bull, hosted a little Christmas party for the kids of Lydia Children's Home and the Jewish Children's Bureau. Had a good time, too. Is this on TV? Yes, it is. It is on TV. <laughs> what about Steve Fuller? Is he out of it or right? I think he is. I think uh, it's just going to be Flutie all the way now. Uh, Dick has obviously settled on that, and Tom Zuck will back him up only if Flutie gets in trouble. Okay. Okay. Thank you, right. Thank you Mark. Ron Majors is standing by in the Channel 5 newsroom with a preview of what's coming up tonight at 10. Ron? All right, we'll have a couple on uh, the latest on the couple of local breaking stories, the deadly shootings at the uh, water filtration plant near Navy Pier and the plane crash that killed four near DuPage Airport. But also tonight, Dr. Barry Kaufman will begin his uh, special <laughs> Christmas Week <laughs> series of reports called Gifts of Health. Tonight you'll meet a young lady who came here to Chicago for her gift, and we'll update you on that voyage around the world flight when you join us here at 10. Art and Mary? Thank you, Ron. 30 years ago, Leoma Thompson of Plainview, Texas, sent a Christmas card to her sister-in-law, but she forgot to sign it. The sister-in-law, being a thrifty sort, sent it back to her the following year. And back and forth, the card has traveled for three decades now. Says the sister-in-law, I'm just surprised the card is in such good shape. I'm deterior deteriorating, it's hard to say, a lot faster than it is. Not a bad way to do it. <laughs> That's the latest from Channel 5 News. I'm Art Norman. And I'm Mary Murnay. We thank you for joining us. Have a good evening. A Channel 5 editorial follows immediately. It's that time of year again, folks. Time to make New Year's resolutions. Time to take a look back at 1986, learn from it, and make positive resolutions for 1987. Well, one of the most positive resolutions we can see is as high as the skies. In fact, it involves the skies and their safety. We've spoken of the dangers in the skies today. We've pointed out that the Aurora Control Center, which controls air traffic for five states, including Illinois and the world's busiest airport, O'Hare, is having problems. We've talked about the fact that this control center contains the oldest computer equipment in the nation. We've covered its breakdowns. We've shown you the near crashes in the skies over Chicago and the mid-air crashes in California and Texas. We've asked that something be done to ensure safety in the skies. And now someone else is asking for that. He's a senior flight operator, the top pilot for United Airlines. He's sending out letters to his fellow pilots that basically assert the only reason there's not been a mid-air collision over Chicago is due to the skill of the pilots. The trend toward mid-air collisions, his letter says, is indisputable. The letter underscores the immediate need for updated safety equipment for the FAA Aurora Control Center. The FAA needs money from the Office of Management and Budget to get that equipment and manpower in there. We urge the OMB to make that resolution for 1987. Adequately fund the FAA. Put the latest and most sophisticated equipment in the Aurora Center. Stop the trend of near crashes before they become catastrophes. I'm Dick Lobo. Everyone who's finished their Christmas shopping may now leave the room. Hmm, everyone's still here. Well then, all you last-minute Santas are gonna love the Christmas bonus sale at Main Street. 
Look, all 14 karat gold, sterling silver, and diamond jewelry is 50% off at Main Street. Famous Maker watches are just $39.99. And save 30% on all men's and young men's sweaters. So now that you've heard about the Christmas bonus sale at Main Street, you... Oh, oh I see. Now you're leaving the room. Going to the sale at Main Street. Good thinking. Smart. Here's Tom Cruise basking in the color of money. Crocodile Dundee biting off 100 million. Meet them and lots of others in People's special year-end double issue. People gives Fergie the royal treatment. Vanna White, game show's favorite letter woman, and David, talk show's favorite letter man. All in this extra thick, chock-full year-end issue of People. Like Dr. Seuss, Whitney Houston. In fact, the 25 most intriguing people of 86 and who's coming up at 87 in the People Pack year-end double issue of People. Law professor, state senator, Illinois Senate president, county assessor, Tom Hines has left his mark. Whether it's protecting homeowners or working to improve Chicago's economy, Tom Hines gets things done. The Sun-Times said Hines made the property tax system more fair for homeowners. Crane's Business said Tom Hines has proposed the most significant improvement in the business climate in more than a decade. It's time to put Chicago first. Tom Hines for mayor. From Hollywood, it's the all-new Newlywed Game. And now, let's meet our Newlywed couple for today. Couple number one. When they got called to come down for our show, he was in the middle of war games. But before the Army could helicopter him out, he got captured in a training maneuver, and phew, he had to escape to get here. Karen and Scott Pavlock. Couple number two. Their apartment manager gave them a room for their honeymoon, so they decided to go and check out the bed. But the manager stopped by unexpectedly while uh, <clears throat> they were rehearsing the honeymoon. Ooh. Cam and Tony Brocker. Couple number three. Right before the wedding, they found out they were almost cousins. Her mom almost married his uncle 30 years ago. But now they're just one big happy family. Woo! Phyllis and Mickey Gonzalez. And couple number four, they met at a party, but he was so rude and obnoxious, she wanted to throw him out. Well, the only problem was it was uh, his house and his party. Marianne and Jeff Carden. Those are our newlyweds for today. And here's your host, the star of the all-new newlywed game, Bob Eubanks. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the all-new Newlywed Game. General Omar Bradley once said, In war, there's no second prize for the runner-up. Well, we only have one grand prize here, too. And today's show, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and Marines will all do battle for it right after this. Don't go away. When you have a cold, <laughs> this is the focus of suffering. Where you want Dristan, where you clog, drip, throb, Dristan gives you extra relief. Many cold products contain antihistamine. Others add decongestant. But Dristan adds a third medicine to relieve aches and pains. An extra medicine for extra relief. <laughs> At the focus of suffering. Dristan. Tablets and new coated caplets too. Recent medical evidence has shown that your family's risk of heart disease can be reduced by lowering their serum cholesterol levels. I'm <laughs> one step ahead of you. One way to do that is by eating foods low in saturated fat and cholesterol. Gee, hope that's not full of saturated fat. <laughs> of course not. It's new promise. See? Made with sunflower oil, no cholesterol, low in saturated fat. Mm. So get heart smart. Choose foods like promise. Like new promise spread. Get heart smart. Try new promise in your dietary plan. Welcome back to the all-new newlywed game with the wife secluded safely off stage. It's time for some five-point questions. First question, gentlemen, after your very first date together, will your wife say she told her friends more about what you did, what you didn't do, what you wanted to do, or what you didn't want to do? What did she tell her friends, Jeff? Uh, that'd have to be what we did. What uh, you did? Definitely. All right. She was always, uh... Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Mickey. <laughs> what we did. What you did. She's crazy. She is crazy. Oh, yes. Congratulations. Oh, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Tony. I'd say what she, uh, what I wanted to do. What you wanted to do. Right. All right. Scott? I'd have to say what we did because it was a nine-hour date and we, we did so much. between. What the you movies. did. Then I, then I went off to basic training and we were married. Four months later. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> Next question, gentlemen. Of all the people the two of you know, who will your wife say is far and away the biggest namby-pamby? 
First name only, please, Mickey. Of all the people, the two of you know, who's the biggest Namby Pamby? I would say Tom. Tom's an old Namby Pamby. Yeah, I'll be darned. Right. Tony? Definitely Ron. Ron is. Yeah. Definitely Ron. For sure. For sure. Yeah. No question. What was his name? Ron. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Scott? I have to say Ken. I'm always Ken? there. Always going out and getting in trouble with him. Namby Pamby. All right. Jeff? That would have to be Cindy. The girl's a major airhead. I understand. Definitely. Okay. Cindy. Next question, gentlemen. If people had a baby every time they made Whoopi, how many babies will your wife say would be crawling around your house right now just from last month alone? Just from last month alone, Tony. Do you remember 20. last month? Twenty. Twenty. Who? This may be a contest, folks. <laughs> Scott. I'd have to say five. I don't oh, so feel too much. Ahead. <laughs> Jeff. Um, their filtration plan. While in suburban DuPage County, four people die as a plane crashes trying to land. Also on our news tonight, President Reagan says no to pardon for two key figures in the Iran arms affair, and the Voyager limps for home and a hero's welcome following a record-setting trip all the way around the world. Those stories and more coming up next on Beats on a Collection News. This is an AT&T Long Distance Command Center, where our engineers make sure your calls go right through. It's a unique system only AT&T can bring you with thousands of ways to get from here to there. And there are seven more centers like it, because we're not about to take chances that busy circuits could keep you waiting. Well, she definitely has my hair. <laughs> For over a hundred years, when you reached out, we were there. And you can keep it that way. AT&T, the right choice. Holy smokes, what is this? It's a Pontiac Fiero GT. Look, right, Eileen, what is that? My new Firebird Trans Am. Can you dig it? Yes, I can, dude. Don't tell me you've got a Pontiac too. Uh -huh. Sunbird Turbo. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, it's really fun to drive if you're into Pontiac. Eh, yeah, no problem. That's my Pontiac. We feel the Pontiac. Where it well into the night. 